All right, hello. Um, so I'm still a bit sick, so ignore the, the sniffles here. Um, so what we want to talk about today is the derivative. The derivative is maybe the most important uh, concept in all of calculus. It's going to help us basically every step of the way through here uh, for the rest of the year. Um, so let's talk about what the derivative is. So the derivative on, on one point is, um, in words, basically the slope of the tangent. The slope of the tangent is the, the derivative in, in words. So if you had a function like over here, f, and we were interested in a point uh, a on that particular one, then we'd be interested in drawing the tangent line to that curve, like so. So remember, a tangent line tries to follow sort of the, the slope of the curve at that point. Um, and so the slope of this line is the derivative here, okay? Um, and so we talked about finding so that's also the same thing as saying the average or the uh, instantaneous rate of change. So slope of the tangent line, instantaneous rate of the change, they're talking about the same thing here. Um, and so what we want to do is try to develop a, an ability to try to uh, find the slope of our tangent lines here. And that's going to be through thinking about average rates of change. So. Average rates of change are through two points. You have to know like A to some other one. What we're gonna do is sort of fake this out. So I'm gonna choose a point that's pretty close to A, follow that on down. And so there's some different ways you can sort of label this point. I'm gonna call it X. Okay, let's try to get this to focus a bit more here. For some reason it doesn't wanna focus for me. Um, so we're going to talk about the setup here for the average rate of change. So for the average rate of change between A and X, we would do F of X minus F of A all over X minus A. So this is something we talked about in class. So it's just your change in outputs over your change in inputs. It's just the slope between two points. All right, but instantaneous actually talks about sort of these two points getting closer together. So what happens if we move x closer to a? Well, then it starts to become more like this line is going through just a and not through x anymore. So how do we represent that over here? Well, if we want x to get closer to a, we'll take the limit as x approaches a. So that's our, our very first definition of a derivative. It's basically the limit of the average rate of change formula. Okay, but there is a different formula that we could come up with. So, and it just has to do with sort of how you um, decide to label things. So here I called this x, but what if I called this instead a plus h, because I'm going to call the distance in between my two points um, h. So that would mean that this x value becomes a plus h. Well, let's see how that changes our formula over here. So instead of x's, I want a plus h. So we're going to go the limit as, not x anymore, a plus h approaches a of f of a plus h minus f of a all over, instead of x, a plus h, and then minus a. Okay, well that can simplify a bit here. So the denominator is the most obvious thing first, so let's rewrite the numerator as is. That cannot be simplified right now. So we got an a minus an a. Well, that adds to zero, so we just have h in the denominator. And you know, this is a bit clunky over here, this limit part. So let's think about a, an easier way of writing the same thing. Well, if we sort of think about this as an equation, we have a on both sides. So if we subtract a on both sides, we're left with, well, the left side will just be h. 
and the right side, a minus a, is zero. So as h approaches zero, which makes sense because we want the distance between these two points to sort of collapse on and become almost zero. And so now you can see in all of these, oh, and this is the second definition here, sorry. Second definition of a derivative, I guess technically third. So in words would be the first one, and then here the second one, and then there the third one. All right, you'll notice that in all of these cases, if you just do a substitution, like just plug in a for x, you get zero over zero, plug in zero for h, you're gonna get zero over zero. So like these are designed to be sort of set up as like, all right, I got zero over zero. We know that as the indeterminate case, it could be any number. You gotta go searching for that number. So let's do an example here, okay? So the example I'm gonna do, I'm actually not gonna plug in the a values. You can do that in the very beginning, but I just wanna show you what it looks like with no a value plugged in. Um, so that way it's like the most general possible. So here we go. An example we might do is um, find the derivative of f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 9 at a equals 3. Okay. Um, oh, something I did forget to mention is that um, we have a new notation we can use. So the derivative is um, often denoted with a little tick mark next to it. So here, f prime of x. f prime of x is what you say there. So yeah, like if we're talking about f, f prime of x, if the function is g, it's g prime of x. Uh, there are other notations as well that we'll learn in the future. So, but I just want to sort of point that out, that if you see this little tick mark, it is talking about the derivative. All right, so let's do an example where we find the derivative. Um, and actually, I've done this for a while, so I know that um, this one here is just a little bit cleaner to use for this particular function. I'll do both, and I'll show you how like this one ends up being cleaner this time, but sometimes this one ends up being cleaner it just depends on what you're dealing with. Um, so the, like the number one question usually is, which one do I use? And the answer is, it depends. So like if try something and then if it doesn't work, switch to the other one and see if that works out better for you. All right, so here we go. We are gonna use the, the one with the H in it. So first let me rewrite the definition just so that way we know where everything's coming from. Okay. So first I want to evaluate f of a plus h. So in this function here, every time I see an x, I'm replacing it with a plus h. So we got a plus h squared minus eight times a plus h plus nine. I'll put that in brackets. That is the value of f of a plus h. And now we will subtract f of a, so now I'm just gonna replace all of those with a, so a squared minus eight a plus nine, all over h. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna expand and distribute as much as possible here. So I wanna get rid of all of those grouping symbols. So I'll expand this, so we got a squared plus two a h plus h squared. That's what you get when you expand this, okay? You can use your, your uh, area model to verify that if you want. Distribute the negative eight plus nine, okay? And now let's distribute this negative here. So we're gonna get minus a squared plus eight a minus nine, and that is all over h. All right. So now what happens? Well, this is where we take a pause to notice that we got a lot of things that add to zero in our numerator here. We've got a positive a squared and a negative a squared. We've got a negative 8a and a positive 8a. And we've got a negative, or sorry, a positive nine and a negative nine. So those things add to zero. So what does that leave behind for us? We got 2ah plus h squared 
minus 8h all over h. Okay. So now at this point, uh, I notice again, everything in my numerator has a factor of h. So let's factor out an h because I notice that that will divide with my denominator. So if I factor out an h, I get 2a plus h minus 8 all over h. h is divide, leaving me now with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2a plus h minus 8. And now we can evaluate this limit because there's not a problem. So we plug in h as 0. Don't have to worry about the other terms. They don't have h's. So we get 2a minus 8. All right. So in conclusion, f prime of a is equal to 2a minus 8. This is a formula that will find the instantaneous rate of change or the slope of the tangent line at any point along the parabola. This particular problem asked for 3, so let's go ahead and just find f prime of 3 real quick. So that's 2 times 3 minus 8, which gets us negative 2. Okay. So that is using the H formula. Let's now do it again, except for we're going to use the other formula. And you'll sort of see a, sort of a, a, a different noticing. So in this one, the noticing hopefully is a little more obvious, like the things that will add together to 0, the factoring out of an H. The other one, you have to sort of notice and group a little bit differently in order to make sure it works out. So let's do that. So we're going to do the exact same problem, except for I'm going to use the first formula I wrote down, which is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. Okay. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and substitute in our function first. So f of x is x squared minus 8x plus 9. f of a is a squared minus 8a plus 9. And that is all over x minus a. Okay. So we'll distribute that negative now. So the limit as x approaches a of x squared minus 8x plus 9 minus a squared plus 8a minus 9 all over x minus a. Okay, so just like in the previous one, we do have a couple of things that will add to 0. Positive 9, negative 9. So what are we left with? We have the limit as x approaches a of x squared minus 8x minus a squared plus 8a all over x minus a. <clears throat> okay, so at this point it might seem like I don't, I don't know what's going on. Um, but if I think about like what I want to happen, I want to try to find a factor of x minus a up in my numerator so that way I can divide them out like I did here. I found the h as a factor, I divided it out. So how can I see that? Well, there are some nice patterns here if you group differently than what you have going on right now. So I'm going to group sort of function families together and see what's going on. So the limit as x approaches a of, so I'm going to group together x squared and negative a squared. And I'm going to group together negative 8x and positive 8a. Okay, um, so that can factor right there. Um, that is just a difference of squares. If you're not good at recognizing those things, then get some practice on it. You can Google like difference of squares practice and find like a bajillion problems. Um, and that one has a common factor of negative h that I can factor out. So let's see what happens when I do my factoring here. So as x approaches a, so this will be x plus a times x minus a. 
And then if I factor out negative eight here, I get x minus a all over x minus a. Hey, at this point, these are a common factor now. So these two terms both have an x minus a in common. Um, so you can factor that out. A different approach would be to split the fraction. So like do this division and then do that division there. Um, but I like to factor it out. So x approaches a. So I'm going to factor the x minus a from each of those. So what does that leave behind? Well, if I factor this out, I'm left with x plus a. If I factor this out, I'm left with negative 8. Whoops, that doesn't need any bracket there. All over x minus a. Now these divide to 1. So what does this leave me with? The limit as x approaches a of x plus a minus 8. I guess I don't need the parentheses, huh? Yeah, let's get rid of those parentheses. Don't need those. So x plus a minus 8. Now let's evaluate the limit because it's not a problem. I don't have 0 in the denominator anymore. So I'm going to make a be a, or x be a. So we're going to get a plus a minus 8, which of course is 2a minus 8. Oh boy, that did not look like an 8 at all. All right. And that is the same formula that we got up here. So f prime of a is still 2a minus 8. That's good. If different formulas got me different answers, I would wonder what I did wrong. Um, so this is finding a derivative using limits here. So this is what we're going to practice for a while here. There are shortcuts that we will eventually learn. Uh, but for now, we need to do it the long way to sort of get a sense of what it is. Um, so yeah, please take the survey after this. And uh, let me know what you think and what sort of questions you have and what ifs. And we will uh, do some practice on this in class. Thank you.